Just checking on the uh, hazelnuts that are out here growing kind of Not well. too great of a crop this year. A lot of them didn't grow very big. I don't know much about wild hazelnuts though, so maybe that's standard. But the ones that I'm seeing, with the exception of one, are like marble size. Not like large marble size, like baby marble size. So those of us who don't know much about hazelnuts, including your husband, uh, what size are they supposed to be? Like, I mean a hazelnut. It's like, I don't know, maybe a half an inch. Like, like yay! Like that big, which you really can't tell from <clears> the <throat> video. Um, We're we at can... the grapes? Yeah, I know, that's why I stopped. Um, but yeah, I was hoping to maybe harvest some, but I have a feeling any of the good ones have been eaten. And the rest of them are babies. Not hazelnuts. So, that's sad. But there are, there are some grapes over here. They're not... These are the ones that I had tried the other day. Yep. How are they looking? I mean, they're squishy. And that, folks, is technically how you tell when they're ready, is they're squishy. Mm. Okay, I've got texture issues. And so we talked about that neurotypical stuff. And that was unpleasant. <clears throat> so, like, the skin on them is really tough. And it's the first thing that splits when you bite into it. And then it's just kind of like gooey. It's not because they're not cold and because they're wild and they're small and they're full of seeds. It's like jelly and then seeds. And that's you unpleasant. grab me one. <clears throat> so we have different textural issues and I won't touch cherry tomatoes. Yep, that feels like a cherry tomato. Don't. I mean, it does taste good. That is a horrifying texture. It is. It's not a good texture. But the, the flavor's good. Which the flavor's is amazing. I would make jelly with them mm -hmm. if I made jelly, because I don't make jelly. Um, but those would be conquered grapes. These are real conquered grapes, too. These yeah. are like... But you'd have to, like, de yeah, get all the seeds <clears throat> out. and It's, yeah, that's not fun. But it's kind of cool. I probably won't save any seeds. <coughs> Someday I might grow them. So that is the skin. That's how tough the skin is. You know, like the, um, remember the fruit leathers we used to get as a kid? I can't use the trademark name. Like if you left one of those in your car for like 9 million years and it had sex with like an apple skin and then that went sour. <laughs> Other than that, it's delicious. Oh man. Oh God. <laughs>
lucky that we can walk down here in the evening and see this. Believe me, we know we're lucky. There's also uh, in here, that my, hand, my hand looked like it was moving way faster than normal, whatever. Um, visually, it's interesting. When you film, you look through the camera at the outside, I just broke the fourth wall. Things come out weird, so. Right down in there, you see a lot of little black ducks. Um, seen a few uh, green heads, a few mallards. Beautiful. A lot of frogs. It's just real pretty. What do we got over here? Anything? No. So this is the other side where there's the first big beaver dam. And uh, I'm gonna kind of poke through the tree canopy here. You might be able to see this. And out in there, marsh and whatnot. Um, beautiful. But we've noticed that uh, the land back there, right back that way, they're building they put in like trees, look like it could be fruit trees. I don't know, we're gonna head back because T took a tumble today and rolled her ankle and she definitely is hurting. So back we go. See that over there? Got a little plot of trees in there. We're kind of hoping that they're fruit trees or something, but they may not be. Do you want to know what I have anxiety about? I have anxiety that the yuppies will take over everything and there won't be anywhere to farm. You know the people who won't let you have chickens in your backyard, that type of thing, because it's unsightly. And then they'll talk about how they'd like to eat, you know, farm to table. They just don't want to farm anywhere near them. It falls in that whole NIMBY thing. Remember George Carlin's bit about NIMBY? It's the same with a lot of farming, you know? And because people have misinformation about agriculture, uh, they see Rotational grazing is threatening uh, or destructive. Um, we actually drive by a farm every day on the way to work, and uh, the smell that comes off this thing is terrible, you know, and that smell is mismanagement. And all the people around that farm have to deal with that smell, which means their perception of farming is not particularly good. Uh, and we feel like that if that's not reversed at some point soon, people are gonna keep doing the reductionist agricultural practices that will make the land worse. For example, trying to subsist on a non-animal based system where you're not growing soil and you're just amending the soil or you're doing no-till, which is nice, but it still isn't enough. You have, to, you have to put in more than what you take out. Animals do that, we don't. When we take out annuals, that pulls nutrients and carbon density out of the soil uh, that destroys the surface, that allows for runoff. You gotta get people to think about these things differently. It's so hard to. Um, they just, they just need a few acres, not to do anything with, just to grow a crop of underdeveloped, overcrowded trees. So the health of their forest suffers. There's no real edging. They don't adequately provide animal habitat and then we drive to work and every single person has a sign up about how the outdoors are fun again because they sprayed chemicals everywhere. It's, it's not good. It's horrifying. So I got tea with me. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it occasionally flying over us. There's a bat. There's somewhere. a bat and he keeps dive bombing okay. us. Yeah. He's going by that way. And uh, so two things. The reason he's dive bombing us is that he's eating the bugs off of us. Yeah, bitches. The bugs chase us, he chases the bugs. Sometimes bats get caught in people's hair. That's the reason. That's a lot of the time they're chasing bugs. They're not aggressive towards you. Um, you can shake them out, don't grab at them. Uh, the other thing is, is we're walking past the conquered grapes. I can smell them. Mm -hmm. How awesome is that? Awesome. I didn't know you could smell conquered grapes on a vine at a distance. <laughs> Holy smoke, is that amazing. Mm -hmm. So, this is why you owe it to yourself to do stuff like this. Beautiful and smells good. It does smell good. And we can see the sun setting. It's beautiful. 
I'm gonna point this backwards, see if I can get him. You might be able to see him. Uh, They're over by the, I don't know, if, like I just saw them crossing right over by up, the up. lines. I'm afraid to zoom in because you're not gonna really see it. There you go. There you go. Cool. That's a brown bat right there. There's yeah, two. There's a few of them. There's a few of them flying away, diving. Little brat, little bats. So cool. And the sunset. We heard a. There's over here, near the farm, uh, bedded down. There's a turkey that uh, we were talking to earlier, but couldn't get it to come out. It sounded like a hen. You know, might be might be looking for company, uh, but not ours. So. <laughs> and into the darkness we go. If you're wondering what we're doing, we thought we'd stop for a minute and let you listen to what it sounds like out here. I can hear geese and goats from the neighboring farm. And of course the peepers, frogs, all sorts of insect life, birds. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> 